video tutorial on how to run a path analysis using Amos, which is a program that is part of the SPSS software. So here is the path analysis causal model, right, the picture. IVs are stress, depression, calories, and exercise, with the DV being weight loss. So what we're going to do is answer these questions first, and then we're going to go ahead and run the path analysis in Amos. So please hold on one second. So the first question is how many measured variables in this model? A measured variable is represented by a rectangle. So we got five. So there's five measured variables. Second question, how many exogenous variables? In other words, that is a, a rectangle that only has arrows going out. One-way arrows going out. That makes it an exogenous variable. So we only have two here. It's stress and depression. Number three is how many endogenous variables are in this model. And that is any rectangle that has an arrow going in. So if, if a rectangle has an arrow going in and out, it is still considered endogenous. Okay, so we have three. We have calories, exercise, and weight loss. So these three are endogenous. These two are exogenous. A quick heads up, exogenous variables do not get error terms. We're going to hit that again later. So let's go to the next question. Is this model identified? Okay, so the process for identification of a model works like this. you got to take the number of measured variables. That Those are the rectangles. So we got five. You're going to multiply five times the number of measured variables plus one. So it's going to be 5 times 5 plus 1, or 6. It's going to be 30. Divide that whole number by 2. So that's 15, and that gives you the total number of observations. So you got 15 observations here. You have to subtract the number of parameters. So the parameters are each one of these arrows. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 one-headed arrow, one-headed arrows. You got one double-headed arrow, so that's eight. You also have to add what we call um, unexplained variance. Those are your little air bubbles down here. So remember, exogenous don't get those, but the, the endogenous do. So there's one, two, three error terms. So eight plus three is 11. And then the last parameter is uh, the number of exogenous variables. So we have two exogenous variables. For a grand total of parameters of 8 arrows plus 3 error terms, that's 11, plus 2 exogenous variables, that makes, how much does that make? 13. So we take the number of observations, that's 15. Let me scroll this up here. Total number of observations was 15. We're going to subtract the number of parameters, which is 13, and that leaves us 2. And that gives you, that's your degrees of freedom. So that's good. If your degrees of freedom equals zero, that means it is just identified, which is not a bad thing. If your degrees of freedom is a negative number, that means your model is not functioning. So you cannot work the model the way it is if you get a negative de degrees of freedom. Okay, so so the main thing you want is you want to you, you want degrees of freedom to be greater than zero. What this means it's over identified. So that answers number four. So here comes number five. We are going to go ahead and run the analysis. So give me a second to get pull up Amos. So we're going to go to SPSS, and I'm going to show you how to open up Amos from SPSS. Please hold. Okay, here's the data that we're going to use when we run this path analysis. So to open Amos from SPSS, You go to analyze, sorry, you go to analyze, and we got to go down a little bit. So from analyze, right there at the bottom, it says Amos 19. So that's how you get to Amos from SPSS. Click that, give it a second. All right, first thing we're going to do is add our variables. We're going to go ahead and click that and draw one in here, okay? And then we're going to use our duplicate function and just copy this four more times. So the duplicate button is right here this is the little guy here you click on it hold and drag click and drag 
click and drag. Sorry, this is taking a long time. Click and drag. I'm just going to pause it. Hold on. All right, so here's our five different variables. Let's look at the original path analysis. Hold on, let me pull this up here. Mm -mm -mm. So here's all the arrows. Next, we got to put in all the arrows. So we got one covariance or correlation, and the rest are one way arrowheads. Let's go back to our IBM. But before we do that, we have to name the variables. So we go here, and that should pop up a list of all our different variables. There they are right there. Let me get this over here. So this was stress. This was depress. This was calories. This was exercise. And your last one was weight loss. Let me drag that over so you can see the whole picture. So we've named them. Now we have to put the arrows in. Always double check that the variables are matching the causal model. If you get them in the wrong order, you're going to get a different result. So let's pull those up again real quick. So stress, depressed, calories, exercise, weight loss. That looks right. Stress, depressed. Yeah, we're right. We're good. So now we put in the arrows. All right. Two-headed is correlation. What you do is you click the bottom one first. Click it again. Make sure it works. Stupid thing. So click. When it's red, that means it's activated. When this one goes green, that means it's okay. Bam. So we got our correlation in here. And we're going to clean it up here after we're finished. So the next thing is we're going to put in our one-way arrowheads. And these will be our path coefficients or our beta weights. So we want one from here to here. We want one from here to here. We want one from here to here. No, we don't want one here from here. Um, hold on. All right, thank you, Copilot. So we want one here to here, and we want one here to here, and then we want one from depression to exercise, and then we want calories to weight loss, and these to weight loss. So let's clean this up real quick. This is a pretty cool thing for Amos. You just click the magic wand, the touch-up box. You just click the boxes until you're happy with the way it looks. Okay, just keep clicking everything. That's pretty good right there. Okay, so... What comes next is we need to add the error terms to the endogenous variables only. So the stress is exogenous, the depression is exogenous, but these three are endogenous. So we're going to go ahead and add those in. You go to this little light bulb looking guy here. You click one here. You're going to click one there. And you're going to click one there. And again, we're going to clean this up. You use your little moving truck. Make sure you got it red, and we're going to move it down here, and then we're going to hit the magic wand, clean it up a little bit, bam, and bam. So there's our model. So now we have to name our error turns up here. So we're going to have to go to plug-in, name unobserved variables. Those are our error terms, and it does it automatically. So now we are almost set to go. Okay, so our causal model diagram, our path analysis is ready to go. Now... It should be, you should have opened up your SPSS data sheet because that's what this, this program is going to draw from the SPSS data sheet to go ahead and calculate the path analysis. That's going to do that. But before we do that, we're going to go up to, we're going to go to view, interface, pro, I'm sorry, uh, analysis properties. We need to do this so we can check a couple of the outputs. They're going to make sure they're there. We always want the standardized estimates. Those are the ones that are going to give us the beta weights and the covariates or the correlations on the actual model. Okay, and we also want modification indices. And there are a lot of different things that you can click on this that would output, but we're not going to do that at this time. So we're good with that. So now it's time to calculate the data. That's this little weird thing here, right? It looks like an abacus. Click. And we go to the finished model up here. I'm sorry, the calculated model is this little thing up here. It looks like the other remote control. And it's going to give us real numbers. So these are the unstandardized B weights. Okay, unstandardized B weights, which we really don't want. So we, and we always look at the standardized estimates, which are the beta weights. So we click on that one, and there it is right there. Okay, so I'm looking at some of them are pretty big. Some of them are pretty small. But we're going to go to the estimates. I'm sorry, the output estimate. So we go to this box. We're going to view the text. And we're going to answer the rest of the questions. So give me one second, and we'll, I'm going to pull up the guided homework sheet. 
Next question, which indices indicate that this is a, either a good model fit or not a good model fit? So the first thing you look at is your chi-squared. Let me pull this guy up here. And that's this is the first page, okay? So this number represents the chi-square 2.24. You're going to see this number again. So that's a small chi-square, but the important thing is it is not significant, okay? The p-value for this chi-square test statistic of 2.24 is greater than 0.05. We're going to see that in, in a minute or two here. So that is um, that's good. That means that the... The difference between our model and what they call the saturated model, what we like to call the perfect model, there is no significant difference. I'll say that again. There is no significant difference between the model that we just made and what the computer thinks is the perfect model, which is good. So that's, that's your first step. You're going to click on the model fit button, and this is, this is where most of the answers are to this. So your next check is the C-min. C min. Now this should be the same as your original chi squared. It was 2.24, and here's the p value to that chi squared. So it's not significant. So again, this means that our model and a perfect model, there is no significant difference. Good news. So the next thing we're going to look at is the GFI. This basically should be greater than 0.9. So this is like 90. The the, the cutoff of 0.9 is comparing this model to the perfect model. And our number is uh, 0.994, which again means that our model is very, very good. Next thing we're going to look at is the... Okay, so we use the NFI here. Again, we want this NFI to be greater than 0.9. And there's another one, the R RFI. These are all 0.9. So basically, these all of these right here tell you how good of a fit your model is to the perfect model. So the bigger, the better. And 0.9 is what we consider a critical cutoff. So... CFI, that's, you know, that's practically one. So our model is looking really, really good. We got one more to check here. Hold on. And that's the RMSEA. I forget what it stands for. Um, but our RMSEA, and we're always looking at the default model here. That's our model, okay? So the default model is our model. The saturated model is what, what, what I call the perfect model. But our RMSEA, that is the error term. And this should be under 0.05, and it is. Again, we have all of our indicators are saying that our model is extremely strong and very, very good. So let me see. Let's go ahead and jump back to the questions. <laughs> so, right, we the CMIN is good. The GFI, NFI, CFI, they're all over 0.9. And our room C is less than 0.05. So those are our indicators that tell us we got a good model fit. Let's go on to the next question. Next question, which path coefficients are significant? Which ones are not? So for that, we go back to our output page. We're going to go to estimates. Kabam. And this, this box right here, I simply cut and paste into the guided homework. So this is the one I'm going to reference. And what you're looking at is the p-value. So the p-value, if it's less than 0.05, that means that's a significant relationship. Correlation, beta weight, whatever you want to call it. So the, the significant ones are from stress. Here, I'm going to pull the picture up a little bit so we can see what's going on. So from stress to calories, from stress to calories, strong, right? From depression to calories, depression to calories, strong. From stress to exercise, not so strong, okay? Depression to exercise, pretty strong. Again, this one is calories to exercise. So calories... To exercise, not so strong there. And then calories to weight loss, yeah, that was significant. But exercise to weight loss, not so significant, according to the data. Okay, so that answers question number six. Let's go on to number seven. So you want us to, they wanted to cut and paste the path coefficients model into here. So let me show you how to do that. Hold on. So going back to the regular Amos with all the important stuff on here, one of these buttons will allow you to cut and paste your, your graphic into a Microsoft document. And then it's this little bad boy here. You're going to copy this into the path diagram. Simply click on that and then go back to wherever you want to cut and paste it and then just cut and paste it. And that's what we did. So, And again, you can look at the numbers. I'm just going to look at the ones that were not significant. So from stress to exercise, that is only 0.03. 
negative 0.03, that is tiny, so yes, that would not be insignificant. From calories to exercise, calories to exercise, that's negative 0.05, that's nothing. And from exercise to weight loss, that's practically zero, so... So all coming together. And last one was, are there any modifications needed? This is the cool thing about Amos. If if your model isn't a good fitting model, it will suggest different pot path analysis for you. So, But according to this thing, we don't have any. Let me show you where that is on our put out here. And it would be modification indices. So if it if it had a different idea, you know, if it looked at the at your data columns and realized that there was a better relationship that you hadn't listed, and if it was significant, it would list this in here for you. So this will tell you where to change your model. But I believe that's everything. I hope that helped, and that's all she wrote. Said to go. MGZ out. <laughs>